The broadcast is live. I see it right there. LinkedIn doesn't like us. Ah, LinkedIn. They're such elitists. All right, so I'm, <laughs> I'm removing LinkedIn because they're scammers. Yeah. All right. We, we are, are live. live. Are we live? We're live. We are live. Awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome to Pop Psychology Live. This is so cool. This is one of our live broadcasts. There it is right there in the corner. <laughs> Pop Psychology Live, where we will rub your brain every single time. Sometimes the right way, sometimes the wrong way, but we will rub it nonetheless. Uh, sometimes, we try to be gentle. We, we yeah, we, we, we're gentle, but sometimes it will be against your will. <laughs> <laughs> and so you might hate it sometimes. Yeah, you, be ready for that. So. We've been told that happens. <laughs> yeah. So, so you welcome. Um, uh, so Scott has uh, has wonderfully orchestrated this to be live, and and with any luck, it'll uh, record, and we'll be able to see it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> sure, hope so. So last week we had this weird little uh, blackout for about the first minute and a half, which was funny because I also had my name abbreviated, my last name, just with G at the end. So right. the whole thing was anonymous. I was kind of like in a witness protection program. Right. But I'm out now. Uh, Again. I'm better. Again. Um, whatever I was hiding from is over with, and I'm, I'm okay. So <laughs> You're safe. Welcome, All right. Welcome. <laughs> Good. Well, welcome to uh, uh, to the show. I appreciate you showing up and, and – uh, if you are out there watching, uh, that's very cool. Uh, disclaimer always is that um, this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, so if we say things that offend you, we're, we're terribly sorry, but it's just the way it goes. That's the way the show is kind of designed. Uh, and, and in the start, we tell you that this is the worst advice or viewpoints you'll ever have uh, around psychology and pop psychology. So if you're looking for uh, good advice and, and points of view. Uh, this isn't the place to go. Go somewhere else. Uh, but listen to the show first, and, and then after after the show, once you've been offended, then you can go and, and go someplace else. In the meantime, we'd love to have you stick around and, and then the comment uh, after the show. That would be so cool. We love the comments. Uh, good, bad, and different. Uh, weird. Uh, th those are our uh, some of our favorite parts of the show is uh, reading the comments. Um, but again, uh, this is the worst, worst advice. If you have a, a mental health emergency, please go seek the appropriate help or uh, call nine one one. You would get you would know you would get better advice really in viewpoints if you stood in front of the mirror in your underwear talking to yourself in the dark. <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> and you know, it has been statistically proven that it's almost impossible to. Uh, have a, a mental breakdown while listening to the broadcast. If you do, you'll just be outside of the statistics that we know. But generally, okay. we've found that uh, people listening to the this podcast uh, don't do anything crazy while they're listening to it. It's it's uh, yeah. afterwards when it when it's really good point. <laughs> really good point. They're so riveted because they cannot believe what's coming out of our mouths. <laughs> they're like what? And then they just stay there the whole time. <laughs> this is so, a mockery, uh, right? So you, Scott, are coming from your uh, home base there in Colorado Springs. And, yes, uh, and you and are on the road this week. I am on the You've road. I am on the road. I am on the country. My gosh, I've gone through eight, nine uh, states in the last uh, few days. Um, How are they doing? Ending up, uh, I was in Atlanta for a while. I drove all the way to Atlanta. I stayed in uh, uh, Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, um, and then uh, up to uh, uh, Arkansas and Missouri, where I currently am in the Ozark. This is home uh, to me. It's the Ozarks. Uh, and coming to you from Branson, Missouri, uh, the the uh, uh, kind of like the country Las Vegas, uh, and. Uh, Instead of um, 7-Elevens here you know, that they have around the rest of the country, uh, our little convenience stores are uh, come and goes. Uh, and, so I, I, and they sell their merchandise as well when you go in. So uh, it's, uh, it's a come and go a convenience store. Um, and it's <clears> very <throat> popular. Almost every citizen is issued one of these T-shirts when they're born in the Ozark. Right. 
far they come into the country. It's just yeah. amazing, right? I love my come and go shirt, and I have my uh, come and go uh, uh, official drink here. The collector's cup, I see. The collector's cup, absolutely. As and then you drive even, across that area, you have you get acquire quite a collection in the usually in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's my come and go lighter, just in case oh, somebody offers me a cigar. Because <laughs> I don't smoke, <laughs> but and that's I will uh, partake in a cigar once in a while, uh, which we did in Atlanta, by the way, when we were staying at a very fancy hotel called the Georgian uh, Hotel in, in Atlanta. And we sat out on the terrace uh, of, of, on the, the place with our uh, with our cigars, and um, and it's a good thing I had my come and go lighter. To go so you that. found a place uh, in America that still allows people to smoke stuff. <laughs> yes. Wow. Outside on the terrace, uh, it was it was cool, and so because you coming from uh, California. That is kind of foreign, right? It is. Uh, it would be the weirdest to do thing. anything. Yeah, uh, it would be the weirdest thing ever, just except for the cigar bars uh, that exist around California. Uh, but that's within about like twenty feet around that cigar bar. That's it. That's what you get in California, and, and um, with a special expensive permit that you buy. <laughs> you have, it's a little machine. You have to do the permit to, in order to smoke the <laughs> cigar on the terrace uh, on the street. Yes. Thank you, government. May I have another? Yes. Awesome. Yay, California. <laughs> <laughs> I understand people are moving out of California in, in record amounts. Amazing. Amazing. It's. Uh, I heard the statistics on the news that people are moving out of California. Uh, I mean, with a lot of good reasons. The, the wildfires are, are just driving people out, literally, or uh, they've lost their homes uh, and just said, forget it, I'm done with this, I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, but a lot of people are just fed up with uh, the taxes and the expense and and um, uh, a home here in uh, the Ozarks. Uh, you, you, could, you, you could get a six-bedroom mansion on... 20 acres with your own pond uh, and and dock and everything for you know five hundred thousand uh, dollars, right. where uh, you'd have to have a little shack for that in uh, California. There's some very nice shanties. Don't don't knock shanties. Uh, you can get a good tin roof. Um, there there are. Yeah. You can make way. your shanty look really nice. I mean, the the shacks that you that you spruce up can be really nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know, it's really sad because uh, California is is a magical place. It really is. Yeah, you, it is. You, I, if you I go love there for a visit, it's amazing. You, you see the palm trees, just the air, the whole feel of it. There, there's this magic, whether it's from Hollywood, whether it's uh, just being on the better of the two oceans we have. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it's it's magnificent. And oh, so yeah. and the coast is more, amazing. like a, a bunch of dorks to wreck it <laughs> and and right. turn it into this horrible see, place to live. And, and that's it, because you'll you'll hear me talk about California. I don't hate California. No, I love beautiful. I, it's beautiful, and the coastline is just amazing, and the and a lot of the people are really nice. Uh, but yeah. it's just uh, it seems like the the government in California has just wrecked everything in California. It just made it really difficult to enjoy being in California. That's it, because California. Remember, is you heard it here first that the government wrecked California. It, it, <laughs> in it, case it you has. didn't, know. I will be the first one to tell it's, it's, it's a wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's the in uh, uh, Newsom, Governor Newsom, or or even in Los Angeles, um, it's just been uh, just hell trying to survive. And and if you have a business in California, it's just one of the most difficult. And that's why a lot of the businesses are leaving. Tons and tons of businesses are leaving out of California just because of the the crazy taxes and and. And they pass more laws for more taxes. They want this and they want that. And it's just mismanaged and they, they just want everyone to pay. They want the businesses to pay and everyone else to pay. There, there are wonderful people um, in California. My wife is from California and she's the best thing in California. Um, but, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Um, it's Was just that a sponsored message, different. by the way? Which? <laughs> 
on it. Being the oh, best. Oh no, that's just, that's just good California. Wife. She's from California, so I mean, California has to be a, a, a good place because she's from it. So that's that's all. Um, hey, I'm from so, California. Yeah, is that I right? Born you, there. You were born in California. That's right. I, yeah. I had I had been thinking that you had, you were raised in Colorado, though. Colorado. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> So okay, I forgot that. born at St. Joseph's Hospital right behind Burbank Studios. I know that place. Disney right? Studios in Burbank. We trained that place. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They still have a plaque up there in your honor. <laughs> I, I the good I think it was good though that I was raised in Colorado because like you being raised in Missouri, uh, you learn a little different set of values. And oh, oh, that was yeah. something we we had been talking about earlier is uh, you know, you're now raising your kids in California, but yeah. you're raising them more as uh country kids. Yeah, at least uh, I'm trying. What, what's that like? Yeah, I'm trying. My wife and I have tried to raise our kids to be country kids instead of city kids, which is not an easy thing in um, in uh, Los Angeles to, to do. And uh, if you if you can see behind me here, by the way, I'm I'm uh, coming to you from my mom's house uh, yes. here in Edson, so you'll see pictures of my dad and my mom and mother. Mom yes, pictures. There are pictures of me all over the place behind me here. <laughs> and let me just uh, interject there that for everybody that shows up at Doc's mom's house, she is mom. She is it mom. Doesn't matter who you are. If you walk in her door, she's mom and she will take care of you like your birth mom. <laughs> yeah, you know, every way. You have she, she will, that firsthand. So, we would go there when we were filming stuff. We we would all pile in and sleep on the couches and the floor and fill up every <laughs> square inch of uh, her house. And, and she was the most wonderful, gracious. And we did this over and over and over. We'd bring 15 film crew into her house. Oh and yeah. uh, and it, it's amazing because the first time you're there, she asks you know what do you like and oh. gets gets an, an interest in in the kind of stuff you like and then the next day it's all there it's you magic. walk into the kitchen in the morning and whatever you said you liked it's yep. there in the kitchen there. and you have it and and every time you return to her house it could be five years later you show up at her house and guess what's waiting for you she will Just remember stuff. every single thing that you liked yes I, it is amazing. It is mom she is mom. Yeah. yeah, my kids say the same thing. They say, they they say she'll say, what do you like in the morning to, for breakfast? And she'll, they'll just mention a couple things and just magically just appears the next breakfast and for every other <laughs> breakfast after that. And <laughs> she's wonderful. It's remarkable. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's awesome. So I am, I am coming to you from uh, my mom's house here in Branson, Missouri. Uh, <clears throat> and so, so I, I, and excuse my... Um, a weary appearance because I drove all night uh, from Atlanta, by the way, to get here uh, this morning just for this uh, podcast. <laughs> so I'm, I got here well, just a couple hours before uh, we went live. Because it's important. <laughs> it is important. I, it's important yes. for, for this and for anyone who happens to listen to us and watch us. I think it's very important. So I drove all night. Uh, in order to get here just in time to do this uh, webcast. Which is one of, one of the underlying reasons why we do this for anyone listening is we value mental health. Yes. Yours, ours, everybody's mental health. Uh, I mean, I, that's why I've, I've made a career out of that for 40 some years uh, of mental health because I am completely dedicated to mental health. And so we support that. We may poke fun at things once in a while, but but overall, we support it and help it and, and advocate it, like you're saying. And speaking of supporting, we uh, I heard we have a new sponsor. Yes, we do. We actually have a, a sponsor, uh, a new sponsor. It's uh, the uh, acronym is uh, AAMN, uh, which is American Association of Men in Nursing. And so they have graciously sponsored us and um, are, are uh, kind of aligning with us and want to do some things with us. And we're going to do some things with them. Uh, it's a national organization that 
Um, they uh, are doing wonderful things to advocate health care and mental health around the country. And they work with the health care uh, organizations and networks all over the country. And so they're, uh, we're very honored to be um, uh, allied with them and in association with them. So we're very excited about that. Hey, Doc, speaking of that, we just uh, we received a comment um, and I think I can show it on the screen uh, just so and this is just for complete transparency here. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right, but Marjun Islana, um, if that is correct, she's asking, uh, she says, can you please help me? I need I need a phone, maybe a phone number for online class. My mother doesn't have money to buy a new phone because of pandemic. I hope you Which gave me. Uh, God bless you. Yeah, totally makes sense. So she's looking for a class. I I'm not sure if she's looking for a class or if she wants us to give her a phone. I don't have money to buy new phone because of pandemic. Uh -huh. I hope you gave me. So she may be asking for a phone. Hmm. Um, well, there are several, you know, in California, um, is it, does it say if they're in California or not? It does not say. Margin, if you can leave a more comment, giving us a little more information. Because I know in California, um, they're, they're offering uh, free phones to, um, uh, individuals that are uh, have gone through hard times because of the pandemic. There are right. Um, um, we have that here in Colorado too. Do you have it? Yeah. So I know that that they're offering that. I see some of those um, um, those organizations around uh, the city, and they're giving out uh, those free phones. So I, I would encourage. I think it's a it may be a county um, uh, uh, giveaway. So I think if you if they contact the county of whatever kind of LA County or Orange County or whatever County that you're from. I think it's a County um, program. It may be a city or County. And I know there's other organizations too. I know uh, like here where we have uh, various food shelters and yeah. there are uh, some additional programs along that where if you, you called whether it's the Red Cross or right. Um, one of those organizations that's local to your area and ask them if, if they had any ideas, any tips on where you might look for this. I, I think they could probably get you going down the right path and Absolutely. get in contact with those people, but we know that they are available. I, yeah. I not doctor. Especially, yeah, especially like the Red Cross, because they, they would know at least the avenue of where, where to go. Yes. So, so but thank you for reaching out and yeah. certainly uh, keep us, updated on how that goes for you and and uh, they have the ability people have the ability to email us correct is that have we have we given out an email address at all or do we even have an email address to <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so this shows up live on uh on facebook and right. on youtube yeah. and apparently you're not good enough for linkedin they wouldn't let us broadcast on linkedin maybe that will change oh, yeah. oh my down God. the road uh, and I, maybe it's just a process. I'm sure there's a bureaucratic process we need to follow oh, to uh, qualify as somebody worthy of broadcasting on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So we may get there uh, if we ever achieve worthiness. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We got off topic. You were asking me about uh, raising kids uh, in the city to be country kids. and Yeah, because we, <laughs> you and I both benefited greatly from having exposure to a stream in our backyard and woods and yeah. uh, places where we could just run free. We could camp, we could poke an ice, poke the ice river with a stick in the winter. We, you know, if we, yeah. I know for us, if we had a stick, that was all we needed. We That was a rifle that we played uh, army men and women with. <laughs> It was uh, everything. It was that's everything. how we played Cowboys and Indians. I know yeah. that's not popular yeah. now. I don't yeah. know what we it play now. Funny. If it's yeah, no, in the fifties, what do kids play now? Is it like uh, liberals and conservatives? Is they chase each other around <laughs> trying to kill each other? Is that the new game? <laughs> yeah, that's called Warcraft. <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't think they play outside today anymore. So maybe they don't play any game like that. Yeah. It's just video games. Oh my gosh! Yeah. 
Um, yeah, but going outside and being uh, in the country as a kid is just invaluable. And and I um, I uh, really benefited from that. And my dad made a conscious uh, effort to make that happen too, which which I really have to respect. That um, uh, my dad uh, uh, grew up in Chicago, and then he was re relocated down here to Missouri. And he had offers to um, to do uh, work up in Chicago, um, but uh, and they were they were well paying offers. But he he chose not to do that because he wanted to raise his kids in the country, and so he chose uh, the the bottom of Missouri in the Ozarks down uh, near Springfield in France and Missouri. And and, uh, and and talk on why is that? Why is it a benefit? Just why because, raise your yeah, kids I mean, in the country. And I'm not saying that growing up in the city is a bad thing. It's just, I, I, for me personally, it was, it, it was just my world was bigger. I think, and and I was able to just, like you said, run in the streams and and go out and, and camp for a couple of days and um, and just have uh, sticks and, and things to and build, build tree houses and breathe clean air. It was just, it was just such a a great experience to. Um, to build things in, in the dirt, and uh, um, it's it just you could take a walk and and just keep on walking, and it wouldn't run into anything concrete, and um, and you so didn't have tiny urban lung. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so my lungs were bigger back then. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and jeep in the once I got my license, you could jeep in the in the woods and uh, and, and use dirt bikes and mini bikes and just everything that you can't do really in the city very well. And it's kind of foreign to the city. So he was like, "What? That just doesn't make any sense." And so, to me, it just was a, a great experience growing up uh, in the country. And the, I think the values in the country sometimes are just simpler. I'm not saying they're better. Um, uh, there, it just seems to be a simpler life, a quieter life, a slower life, and I, I, I enjoyed that. And, and going to a city and seeing the difference just lets me see how much different that that pace is and the and the values. And so I just want I want my kids to feel that. And being in Los Angeles, that's just it was a difficult thing to do. So my wife and I consciously made an effort to do that. We have a uh, our house has a, a backyard. It's a pretty large backyard, and that was important because I wanted to have at least some space and uh, and be in parks a lot and, and go out in the country a lot and do day trips uh, in the country. And uh, and then we uh, would load in the car and, and drive back to Missouri just as much as we could so uh, they could experience the creeks and the rivers and the lakes and the hills and the mountains and, and the woods and and, uh, and uh, shooting off firecrackers in 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 the in the country something you cannot do in the city at all no. ever especially in California these days and so we have to come here to do the fireworks um, and um, and just meet the people and, and the people are are just slower paced and there's there it's a it's a simpler life and and the, the values are just different here and, uh, do you find and so we have so much, we've spent so much time being here and we just we just got back from two weeks here in, in missouri I, I brought the whole family here um and we were in branson and and, um, and on the farm down there and, and there was no wi-fi and and the kids didn't even want to deal with their phones they just had so much fun shooting uh, uh, guns out in the pastures and um and looking at the livestock and and um, exploring the old barn that's on the property. And th those are just magical things that you'll never, ever forget. And, and I never forgot when I was here. And so we've tried to introduce that to them so much that, that now they have actually become more country kids than city kids. They enjoy being in the country a lot more than they do in the city. They can't wait to come back here to Missouri just so they can relax and have fun. The, the, all, that's all not something that you you have to live in the country for. Um, I know in any so it's tough in LA. You have mm -hmm. to go a little bit of a distance to right. find a place that could be a, a nature park or whatever. Mm -hmm. And especially these days now, those are the places attracting uh, a large amount of people. So mm -hmm. now you go, you know, like here in Colorado, we're a you know mid sized city, uh, Colorado Springs, and we have tremendous trails and, and oh, lots wow. of mountain area to hike and everything 
But now, because uh, most people are avoiding doing anything else, True. now you go on the trail and the nature is now kind of a standing room only. <laughs> you're like in right. line right. as you're hiking up the various True. trails because so many people are packing there. But what that That's tells true. me is that there's a real desire in people to have that simplicity, to not be stuck in the city, to mm -hmm. not always be faced with this ridiculous media uh, screaming all the time that we live in and this creating opposition and every they want everybody fighting. And we right. don't see that when we get out on the trail. When you no. get on the trail, uh, people are generally like, isn't that beautiful? That's right, pretty. Exactly. And, and they're polite. Positive. They're nice. You don't see a lot of fist fights when you're hiking. You know, it just no. doesn't happen. It's a, it's a, it's a 360 positive experience. Yes. Where in the city, you, you, like you said, you're barraged with negativity a lot of times, just mm -hmm. between the news, the internet, and everything, and everybody. It's like in the country, like you're saying, it's just it's a positive experience. And you, yeah, look at this. Oh, is that beautiful? Oh my gosh, look mm -hmm. at that that beauty. So it's just, it's, yeah, I agree. It's, it's it's a different experience. And and you have a little bit more of an advantage where you have a city, but you have the country very, very close. You know, in Los right. Angeles, it's hours away. From, right. From, from, you gotta be, you gotta be serious. It's a, it's like a, a weekend trip to go find the country. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go find tranquility. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go look for trees. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find some. Just have to be dedicated. Yeah, and just I, I've never felt comfortable in the country. In fact, I just uh, like I said, came from Atlanta, uh, doing a, a keynote speaking engagement uh, on um, uh, crisis negotiation, and uh, and I was in this city, and it was like being in downtown Los Angeles, and the tall buildings and and the parking structures that you that you have to pay thirty dollars a night just to to be in, it. and uh, and the uh, privilege. And the right and and the hotel, the fancy hotel. I'm not knocking fancy hotels. Okay, no, fancy I hotels. like them. They're wonderful. My wife loves those kind of hotels. Uh, but give me a, one of those little Route 66 motels uh, where you drive right up to the door and unload your stuff. To me, that's oh, like okay. Tell me, okay. Now this is a good time to let's talk about one of those. All right, <laughs> as as we were. We've been uh, shooting oh, no. our, our whole crew. Uh, I know almost twenty of us had been uh, shooting our action sports events in Arkansas, and we're on our way back to California. And so we stopped at this place. I think I believe it was in New Mexico. It was and I in, believe it was, it was in Grant, New Mexico. I can and, I, uh, exactly and and so we're we're driving and it's getting late in the day and we've already you know we've put in this twenty hour days for a week now of putting on this event. So everyone's exhausted. And we're like, ah, oh, let's just get a place instead of driving straight through. Let's let's do the the film crew thing where you pack eighty six people into a two bedroom room. <laughs> and uh, okay, we'll we'll do that. So we land at this place. Um, I don't remember the name of it, and probably because it, it's so traumatic, I think we've all <laughs> forgotten the name of it. We just disassociated ourselves from it. But yeah. if you've ever been to Norman Bates's motel, then this is the place. <laughs> this is the one. It and it was just that nice. And we we roll up to the back door and there's like Igor is at the front desk. He's like, he's like, yeah, can I help you all? And he has this weird look like like he's gonna eat us, you know, like right. he, he's wandering like, by oh, right. good. Yeah. Some people have shown up. Yes. He had the wandering <laughs> eye even. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, we just want to get in this room, and 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 we get we open the door, and it, it, it's difficult to describe without a, a large amount of time how gruesome this place was. So the the floor is that um, ochre yellow shag carpet, but but there is only about. Um, two square feet in the whole room that you could actually tell was shag carpet anymore. <laughs> the rest was like all worn down to the concrete and <laughs> sticky and black. And like, we're like, are those body parts? I mean, you, you you couldn't. Went to <laughs> it was this horrifying place. And, the, and you go into the bathroom and there, um, 
if you remember yeah. the uh, the sha- there's a tub that's just filled you know has the big rust ring right. around the edge of it of the drain is all rusted and rotted metal so that like the water has just been dripping there forever the uh it's missing the hot water handle there's just like a you know you can grab the little thing and turn it but there's no handle on it it's mm-hmm. dripping right then yeah. then there's this nice rusty chain with that yellow uh with a yellowed rubber cork that you could stop the drain with provided right. you were going to take a bath in this thing i right. suspect yeah. it was just to clean up after a homicide like, like hard and crumbly <laughs> Yeah, what well, I mean, the the tub was there only for like cleaning up diabolical things you had done. It wasn't to actually take a bath in. It was horrifying. Yeah, it was something that Dexter would have used. And there's no shower head, so it's just a, a pipe coming out of the wall. There's the threads and some of the the white uh, tape that you use on a on a pipe, oh, yeah. just kind of hanging off it, shredded and, and yellowed from the rust, and but no shower head. Uh, and the the toilet top of the tank is cracked, and it's in two pieces. So it's like aiming down into it, just holding on by the lip of the edge of the of the toilet. Uh, and we're like, and Doc's like, "Isn't this place great?" <laughs> He's like, "This is awesome," and we're we're all trying to figure out how. To, where are we going to sleep that we're not going to stick to the floor? <laughs> <laughs> How do you get this many people in this room? <laughs> okay, my standards may be a little bit low. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, so when Doc talks about uh, Donna likes fancy hotels, you can understand why. <laughs> She's like, when he suggests, hey, let's go on a road trip. I bet the very first thing Donna says is, we're getting a fancy hotel. Don't take us to one of those hell holes. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Right. So that was that was an exception. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, and right. the gunshots in the middle of the night, off in the yeah, distance. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's yeah. all normal. It's all part so, of course. Yeah, yeah. There, there are good ones that are wonderful and, and very quaint. And you know, that one... Yeah, not so much. Yeah, that was, that was an experience. But it's an experience you will never forget. <laughs> so true, so true. <laughs> well, okay, so there's so there's a tremendous amount of benefits of uh, so even though you live in the city, raising your kids uh, more as country kids, or at least with an uh, appreciation and exposure yeah. to yeah, uh, the they country, like the they like the city. And they see it. Because they have they have the benefits from the city, and they you know my uh, my boys are into exotic cars, and you can't see many exotic cars in Branson, Missouri, unless it's in a museum. Uh, so okay. in the city, yeah, they get to do and see the things that they love, uh, but then they they appreciate coming back in a place like this and then enjoying it. So it's kind of a duality, and, I, and I'm the same way. I, there's some things about the city that I need. Uh, but um, but I, I'd much rather be in the country anytime. It's like when I was in Atlanta, I just I don't feel as comfortable the whole time that I'm there. Uh, when I come here, I'm comfortable. I can relax. I can breathe, and it just makes me feel better. You know, in the country, that's all. And so so we know the benefit to us having had more exposure to that than some, and we know the benefit to uh, our kids who also get to see some of that and, and experience some of that. Uh, is it always that great? And, and maybe we should ask your mom what it's like to be the mom of a kid that lives in the country. <laughs> and and I'm guessing she might have some stories to tell to where it wasn't all great for her to have a kid that's raised in the country. <laughs> yeah, okay. all right. it was a little- I, I suspect that's true. I, I, okay, so I was a little rambunctious, <laughs> but you have the space to be rambunctious. <laughs> that's, that's, you wouldn't get thrown in jail for being rambunctious in the country. That's the, that's the difference, right? Yeah. Well, they didn't give you a, a pill to stop yeah. you from being rambunctious. They didn't tell you rambunctious is wrong. Yeah. Now take this medicine so that you can just sit still and stare off into the distance. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't happen in the country. Hey, Mara. 
Can you come here for a moment? Oh, good. And today we have a special guest that we all love, we adore. It's mom, Elliot. Can she make it? She's Can your mom come out and play? Scott has a question for you here. Come over here. Scott has a question. Okay. <clears throat> come on in here, right over here. Okay. Right over here, here. Yeah. Scoot in here. There's mom. Right. There mom. you go. There's mom. 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 There you go. <laughs> there we go. Hi. Hi. It's been a while. So we yeah. were wondering, what is it like? We're, we're talking today about uh, raising children and giving them exposure to living in the country and having a little more freedom than they do in the city and having streams and hills and dirt and BB guns and just all the things that uh, kids get to do in the country that they, that you would probably get arrested for in the city. And so we were just wondering, as a mom of one of those children, uh, was it always that positive for you? Were there ever times that you're like, oh, my son, <laughs> he's making me crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. we had, I had to live with a lot of snakes. <laughs> a lot of snakes. <laughs> a lot of anacondas, bugs. Uh, yeah, I raised exactly whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that may have been one of the, the downsides. There's lots of critters around. <laughs> Did you ever find them in places where they should not have been? Uh, a snake should oh, yeah. probably be in its aquarium yeah. or something, but did you ever find one, them in other places? One big one fell in love with my Venetian blinds. <laughs> <laughs> and my, oh, no. My sweeper. Yeah, no, the, sweeper, the vacuum. The vacuum. The vacuum. It would, the hose. The, the, the anaconda would, would wrap around the hose of the vacuum thinking it would. <laughs> <laughs> It found that special someone. Right. <laughs> I could just see it like hubba hubba. <laughs> You're a well-made snake. Look at, the, look at the pattern on that, baby. <laughs> so I had to be very careful. In the room I went into, I had to be very careful. Remember when um, when you were sweeping in the uh, the attic, uh, no, the, the no. door, the and and you kept clo trying to close trying the to close door. The attic door. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it wouldn't close. And you finally looked up, and the and the snake was so, over the top of the door, and you were trying to push this push the snake into the. He was very mad at me. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. You never seen a snake mad. <laughs> he thought he was a guest. I, I know you always treated us much better when we came as <laughs> film crew to your house. I hope so. so you never slammed any of us in the door. Scott was telling about how how any time that, that anyone's over at uh, at your house that if you say you like something just magically it, it appears it, it, that day or the next day I have a magic closet. <laughs> it's so true, and everybody will tell you that. It doesn't matter who's been to your house; they'll they'll tell you that exact story. Yeah, <laughs> it was greatly not, appreciated. Not seeing everybody you. loved mom. Good seeing you. I'm out Good of to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Wow, that was great. She looks wonderful. She does. She looks yeah. great. She looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so she, she took it all in stride. Uh, she what did. it was like to raise yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of, there, are lot, there were lots of critters uh, around. Uh, between the snakes and scorpions and things, there was one night that uh, my dad woke me up in the middle of the night, and, uh, and he says, "Can can you please get those cockroaches out of the kitchen?" And I'm going, "What are you talking about?" And uh, evidently, the uh, scorpions had escaped from the uh, tank and were running around the, the floor oh, in the no. kitchen. <laughs> he went down to get a midnight snack one night, and. And he almost stepped on one of the scorpions on the, on the floor right there. So he's like, could you go get those cockroaches off the floor down there? So I had to go and scoop up the scorpions and put them back in there. So I don't know of anybody that's a fan of scorpions in their house. Nobody. No. I, mean, I understand that some people like to have them as a, as a pet or something to freak other people out with that they have a scorpion. But uh, so we have the friends that we were visiting in Arizona. <clears throat> it 
would tell us the same thing. Like, well, every once yeah. in a while, you know, you step out of bed and there's a scorpion on the floor in your room. Yeah. What? I know. That's not I, a thing. Just, you know what? To this day, because I I wear boots a lot, right? I'm kind of like the Imelda Marcos of boots. I have a closet <laughs> that's filled with Western boots. And to this day, every single time I put my boots on, I always take the boots and I always shake them upside down, you know, tap yes. them a little bit just in case there's a scorpion in the boot. Because that's, you know, especially in the Western movies, you always see the scorpion in the boot. So. Yeah. That's just wisdom right there. Right. Yeah. That's, that's not that's OCD at all. Taught my kids that. As well as... Uh, just recently, um, uh, being country kids, I uh, gave them each uh, their own throwing knife and taught them how to throw knives. And nice. so I, I helped them through that. And uh, I didn't know if they were going to find that uh, interesting at all or not, whatever. But I did it. I taught them. And uh, they took to it so quickly that they spent the next few days, just just 24 hours, almost a day, just trying to work and, and, and become expert knife throwers. And they started getting really good at it and putting their own spin on it and flipping them before they uh, throw it and doing underhand throws. And, and they start videoing themselves throwing the knives. <laughs> and so, so now they've been sending me videos of how good they're getting it at home in California. Oh, uh, great. Which is, which is everything that you uh, should do is teach your child how to throw knives. <laughs> Something well, in California, and, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't understand. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, and before uh, anybody in the media or Hollywood or somebody tries to say how Doc is raising his kids to be uh, absolute killers now, yeah. uh, before we'll just preempt that with. Yeah, uh, yeah. W this is an important topic because there's a lot of misunderstanding, whether it's with firearms. Uh, whether it's with throwing knives, right. there's a lot of misunderstanding that people have mm -hmm. been, I would say, indoctrinated into believing that your simple association with that makes you a homicidal mm -hmm. maniac. Right, right. And I think it's important to clear that up, that the, the people that are raised mm -hmm. with or trained on uh, any type of weapon, lethal weapon, less than lethal weapon, are amazingly responsible with them and they respect, because they they are taught the, the item, how, right. one, how lethal they are. They're mm -hmm. taught that this is life or death. You That's need right. to know the seriousness of what you're dealing with. It's not a video game. It's not a mm -hmm. movie. It's not where yeah. you just go, you know, you get mad. So you go shoot somebody. You're taught respect for that item. You're taught all of the safety rules around that item. And you're taught sure. the proper use of it and, and its proper Absolutely. place. And we know that there's like two proper uses. It's defense or hunting. Those are the two right. things. You're not taught that, you know, yeah, if you get angry, go take that guy out. That's the mm -hmm. stuff you learn from Hollywood. That's the stuff you learn in video games or movies that right. uh, you devalue that life on the other side. And so your actions have no repercussions. That's what you're taught elsewhere. But people that are raised with firearms, raised with weapons, mm -hmm. are never in danger of them being misused. They're not no, in danger. No. Uh, like like you, you've told me uh, many stories of just, I mean, your dad was a sheriff, so there were firearms. And but you all were taught that respect. You were taught I was how taught to that use them. He was raised that That's way. Crucial. His father was raised that way. Um, it was with a, a tremendous amount of respect and understanding of what you're dealing with and and how um, how serious it is and and how dangerous it is if it's used uh, improperly. And and so I was raised that way. I had a, a great respect for. Uh, weapons and firearms, and and I got good at, and and my father made made sure that I was very good at what I did and and, and responsible before he would allow me to have uh, weapons or my own guns, and uh, and that we would go out and shoot all the time, and we just got to be a, a a muscle memory of how to do it and how to do it right and how to do it safely, and even crossing a fence when you're hunting, how you would uh, position a, a firearm. Uh, on the fence so it doesn't fall over and shoot you or you don't like hold it while you're going across the fence. I mean, everything is, is thought out meticulously. So it's the absolute safest possible. And these are the people that don't typically have accidents. 
Uh, it's the people right. who you don't respect and just don't know about that kind of stuff. And that's just the way it is. And my kids have tremendous amount of respect for firearms. Uh, they know how to shoot. They know how to shoot well. They know how to break them down. They, they shoot at targets. Uh, they're great at target shooting, but they have a great respect for it already. And so uh, even the knife throwing, it's it's on a, a big tree stump. And so that's the only thing that's, that's in danger is the stump uh, with the uh, with targets and things like that. So right, right. Doc, Doc is not, is not teaching, teaching his kids, kids how to throw knives at people. people. Just for just anybody, anybody, anybody out there, there that's thinking, thinking that, that, that anyone, anyone, anyone being hot, hot, hot out of the web being hot, 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 hot has to be so homicidal. That's not never, never. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. So whoever's whoever, whoever saying that, saying that, shut up right now. But that's it. And then it extends out to even so much, so much further. It, it, it enhances, it enhances a person's person understanding, understanding of the value of life. In life. That when you, that when you realize the seriousness of this device, device uh, whatever, whatever, whatever it may be, and its and ability, its ability to, to actually take the life, life, you are reinforcing that life, that life has value, value and that there is accountability, there is responsibility. Right. And that yeah, responsibility is very important. If you choose to participate in it, if you choose to carry uh, a weapon or, or to train on a weapon, I mean, you are taking that responsibility that this thing does have the power to take life and you never want to be in that situation. And that's the underlying uh, effect it has on people is respect for life. And that's something that's not enough about. Respect and accountability. And that's something that's... That, is lacking a lot these days is that accountability um, and so that's something we always teach as well you know even in my company the phoenix training group uh, we have uh, training we, we train uh, with a very professional uh, range masters of how to shoot and teach people how to shoot uh, and and respect weapons as well so wait what was that Phoenix Training Group? Oh, look at that. Was that Phoenix look Training Group? That. That. Look what I Scott I heard Phoenix up this week. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Phoenix Training Group. <laughs> Thank you, Scott, for that. That looks awesome. We got new toys with our yeah, broadcast awesome. booth here. That's awesome. Hey, uh, just uh, do, how much time do we have left? Are we? Are we oh, about 15 done? minutes. Get oh, good. Uh, uh, do we have time for... Uh, um, that was very well put, by the way, about the, the weapons, and it's very, very important. And something we really advocate is safety and and value of life, and and it's just for sport. And um, and if it's done the right way, it's a very safe uh, environment and sport to, to work with. So thank you for that, that viewpoint. Um, uh, uh, we have time for uh, uh, psychology show and tell. Oh yes, what do we, what do we have for this week? Okay, I've so got a for really that good. doesn't know, uh, Doc, he goes around the country. He's part of the Historical Society mm -hmm. uh, for uh, archiving sanitarium history uh, around Especially the country. Especially state hospitals around the country. Yes. And Which so, I, so far this trip, I have visited uh, four, four old uh, state hospitals, um, three of which are still operational. The fourth uh, is not because it's just so old. It's 150 years old, uh, nice. and that was uh, in uh, Tuscaloosa, um, Alabama, and it's the the old Bryce uh, Hospital, 150 years old. So I was able to uh, access it and take lots of pictures and drone shots of it, and uh, so that was really really nice. And spending time there, and they were gracious enough to let me uh, uh, explore that place. So yes, I collect things from uh, old uh, sanitariums and I have for 40 years. And so I've got uh, storage spaces just filled with uh, with just the wildest stuff you can imagine. This week's, uh, I, I think that you will appreciate this one. Uh, there's uh, an old sanitarium in uh, Salem, Massachusetts um, called Danvers uh, Hospital. Uh, I've heard of that. Yeah, one of the most notorious, they used it for, once they closed it down, Long, long time ago, they used it for filming just because it looks so scary. Um, and uh, and eventually, they tore the majority of it down, which is really sad because it was one of the, the most beautiful hospitals. They, they was built in the uh, 1870s, 1880s. So before they did, though, uh, we were able to get a lot of the stuff out. Um, 
And uh, we have everything from uh, uh, straight jackets to um, uh, um, uh, shock treatment machines from long, long ago uh, that actually still work. By the way, you put a battery in it, it will still work. Um, <laughs> but the, the thing that I got, I, I was able to access uh, one of the old psychiatrists back from uh, the teens. But uh, he was a psychiatrist, I think, from... Uh, 1900 through about 1920 or so, and uh, one of the medical directors there, I got uh, some of his uh, personal articles from uh, the desk, his desk, everything, and um, and then uh, there were other um, areas where uh, other doctors had kept their their artifacts uh, over the years uh, back then, back in the teens and 20s and 30s, and so we found. Uh, a couple of things that were kind of uh, interesting, which is the doctors were multi-purpose back then. They were doctors, they were psychiatrists, they were their own chemists, they would uh, make their own medications. Uh, sometimes they were even the dentists. Uh, so they would, they kind of did one size fits all uh, psychiatry. They were the doctor. They were the doctor. The doctor. It yeah. was not a specialty. Yeah. You didn't need to go anywhere else because you were there for the rest of your life anyway. And so uh, <laughs> this. Where you going to go? This right here was uh, the tooth extractor that the doctor would use to uh, extract those teeth. Oh. Right here. So this little this little arm would go around your tooth, right? It would clamp onto the tooth, and then they would just turn ah. that like this, and it would just twist that tooth right out. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it, it looks like, effective. Uh, oh, it was. It was very effective. And I like the nice decorative elements on it too. It had a awesome? it was classy. It, it is. Look at, look at that. It just looks so nice. Yes. So, yeah, that's the fancy, fancy tooth extractor. And just yes. Twist that oh, and right that's there. the one you want. You know, when you need something to focus on while he's tearing your tooth out of your face yeah, like, ooh, with with a nice very good with anesthesia yeah. back then, right? No, none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you'd like uh, have a shot of whiskey, maybe, <laughs> if you were fortunate. Or you yeah, the right. cocaine. That, that was the, they would have a, what's called the elixir, which was a combination of um, uh, opium and alcohol. And sure. that's, that's what they would do. That's what they would do. Happy patients. Which, um, you know, if we were to use that today, I, I, think you would have a similar effect. You wouldn't care what he was doing. Oh, <laughs> Take, Take him off. Oh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Take him <laughs> off. <laughs> so that is the tooth extractor. Now, but and this is at a psych hospital. This is a psych hospital, right? This is a state sanitarium that they kept people for the rest of their lives, right? And oh, so the states get all the not, good stuff. Not only do I have this, but sitting right next to it for what oh, no. reason was a little trophy which oh, was too. which was the a collection mackerel. a collection of those human teeth oh. from from the extractor holy mackerel yeah look at those babies. wow you know when you look back at some of this stuff it would be easy to confuse the doctors back then of the <laughs> of the serial killers today. <laughs> well, we, we kind of mentioned that in, in past webcasts of how sometimes the psychiatrists it, it were they were supposed to be running the show were were just as much or more of patients than the patients were. Right. So, <laughs> right. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> Wow. It's just maniacal. That's just maniacal. Oh, sorry. Just, just so yeah. The the teeth that came from the tooth extractor, right? Oh man. For whatever reason, they kept them. Little trophies. So that is psych show and tell for this week. <laughs> well, maybe uh, back then they did not know the tooth fairy wasn't real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he could have just been. <laughs> 
that was his retirement part right there. I was like, like, ooh, money from me. <laughs> I'm gonna retire. Retire <laughs> <laughs> on this. Oh my god! Because you know he may not have had the stock market or no, no, they they didn't make a lot of money back then. They they mutual funds. So this was their side gig. (laughs) Exactly, (laughs) his side hustle was teeth, (laughs) and they had all of these patients, and so he would just. I would slip every night and, and get the, the change from each of the patient's pillows every single night. He probably made a killing off that. Well, and they were wondering why part of the the admission process was he'd say, open your mouth. Yeah, you'd right. be one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> he would count how many teeth you had. And, and, then and you know, none of these have gold fillings, so I'm sure those got taken to the, oh, yeah. to the way office. You <laughs> know, catch those puppies in. The weights and measures guy. <laughs> right. There <are> those. <laughs> what gold you have for this, this week? <laughs> and if it was today, that would have been an admission criteria is there would have been a diabolical doctor that if he saw you had gold teeth, like, okay, so I was watching a football game the other day. One of the guys has all of his teeth covered in gold, all of them. So this dentist slash doctor would have admitted him immediately. (laughs) He would have said, oh, look, you're just wacky enough that you have to be in my facility. Yeah, just just long enough for us to check those teeth for you. <laughs> take those, <laughs> take care of those for you. <laughs> oh no, look, you have thirty-two cavities. We better get those out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, it was, it was brutal back then. It was just brutal. It really was. Well, if you when well, first there was no oversight, right? No, no. Back then there was no. You ran it as you ran it. So if you right. were a maniacal person and you ran it that way, you know, you were the guy in charge. That's it. And I say That's guy it. in charge because back then it would have been a guy in charge. Correct. Would not yeah. have been no, a lady in charge. Uh, it, to my knowledge, ran the old state hospitals. It was always males. Yeah. And it was just based on your own worldview, your own preference. You would run it however you wanted to run it. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I'm guessing that uh, quickly became the foundation for oversight. <laughs> like, hey, we can't let this go on anymore. This is oh, what terrible. Figuring it out. <laughs> they said, okay, this is awful. <laughs> well, hopefully somebody thought that. They were just depressed and they committed them forever? What? <laughs> yeah. And then they just... Uh, did the lobotomy because they got mad that they were committed yeah. forever or right. the electroshock later on that came well, out? They were just in trouble. Yeah, the, the ones who got lobotomies were the ones just like on One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. It was the, they were the troublemakers, uh, yeah. the ones that made, made their, their job difficult. And so yeah. they would give them lobotomies just to calm them down and make them compliant. You know, docile. So would, yeah, docile, right. Um, just like now we flu. do it with medication, right? Right. <laughs> now it's a pill. So we're the kindler, mm-hmm. gentler civilization now <laughs> that lobotomizes you with medication. Right. It's just kind of a societal lobotomy now. Yeah. Huh. Yep. yep. So okay. that's it. That's my that's my, my uh, artifact for this this week. And uh, I understand you also brought Alexa with you on the trick. Oh, I did. She, she's there. There she is, right, right there. Do you, so Alexa, I, see here, what up? I know you Alexa. always. Uh, we, we we've tried to get her to help us along sometimes. With yeah, along with pictures of of my dad here and my myself with my dad and and um, <clears throat> there's my dad up there and there's oh there's lots of pictures of me up here somewhere. So they're out of frame. Well, it is mom's house. It is. So it'd be weird if it was at your house, but since it's mom's but, house, that's perfectly normal. Can you uh, broaden the picture a little bit? I think so. Everything gets smaller. Let's see that. Oh, oh yeah. There oh, there you go. Now you can see the pictures. 
Right. So now you can see the the picture of, of me long ago. Well, now we well actually we can see that the pictures exist, but now they're further away, so we can't really see what's on the picture. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's worth looking at. <clears throat> oh, look at that guy! Oh, his headshot. This is yeah. Doc's headshot. Yeah, is this stunt, your uh, early this days? Like, yeah, early day, right? Headshot right there. Yep. <laughs> oh my God! Like, hey, I'll do yeah. your stunts. Hey. <laughs> you look <laughs> like you need somebody to do a stunt hey, for you. <laughs> that could be me. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, hey. that's great. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's my how you doing. <laughs> uh, so, what do we have for Alexa? Um. Oh, yeah. Do you have any questions for Alexa? Well, you know, we usually uh, we're out of time actually, but we normally okay. do a, a segment where we look at uh, myths. And oh, yeah. uh, we were talking about earlier uh, pop psychology myths, things we believe right. that may or may not be true. And right. we kind of figure out if they are true or not, or somebody says they are. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to come up with some names for it. Um, and we had uh, a, a lot of different chicken names for some reason. We had kamikaze chicken, uh, uh, which may or may not describe anything we were doing. But it sounded like a great, uh, yeah. but uh, maybe with pop psychology, um, Pollo Loco, <laughs> Big chicken name. Uh, anyways, we had too many chicken names. Yeah. But Alexa might know what is the top pop psychology myth that people believe. Hmm. All right, let me let me ask Alexa that. See if, if that'll work. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait. Alexa, what is the top? Pop psychology myth. Here's something I found on the web. According to scienceofpeople.com, it's a myth that when dating, you're likely to be attracted to people who are very different from you. So can you can you rephrase that? What did she I so couldn't it, hear it completely? So uh, what she was saying is that uh, the myth, uh, the pop psychology myth is that when you're uh, dating uh, opposites attract right that uh, that somebody who is completely different from you is very very attractive uh, and so that's a myth it's actually the opposite uh, more so if um, uh, if you're dating somebody who is more like you is actually a lot more attractive than somebody who is completely opposite so opposites don't attract in, in terms of dating and that from an AI. Absolutely. Huh. And in fact, uh, I, I have researched that and I found that to be true because that I know uh, that um, uh, what she said was absolutely true because I've actually read that that same myth. Well, and it's interesting that she picked that as the number one. Uh, it is. That and that believe. was the number one. That's that, that was the question. So thank you. Thank you, Alexa. <laughs> Well, next week we'll we'll get to a bunch more of those. We we have a oh, yeah. whole big yeah. list of pop psychology myths um, or truths. Some yeah. some we'll, are we'll true. do like a like a, a firing round here. Yes, the lightning round. Lightning yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> lightning chicken. That's what it'll yes. be. Kamikaze pop psychology myths. Whatever. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> lightning pollo. Okay. Yes. So, um, <laughs> Sponsors, here's our sponsor, Belladonna Foods. Uh, if you would like to try this, it's uh, Instagram at Belladonna Foods uh, without the dot com on it. So oh. uh, <laughs> no dot com. <laughs> Just Instagram at Belladonna Foods, and you will find tons and tons of wonderful pictures of uh, the food that uh, she prepares uh, and lots of uh, dishes that you can use this with. So thank you very much for uh, uh, the sponsorship. <clears throat> and she sponsors us with lots of pasta sauce. Lots of sauce. Lots okay. of sauce. But there's there's future products coming, right? Yes, there are. Um, oh look, uh, the banner's uh, fixed. Oh, That's it's nice. fixed. Thank you very much. 
uh, banner person. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, that's our switcher. Thanks, mom. But there's lots, there's <laughs> lots of other foods coming, right? She's yes, uh, are, working on some there more. There are um, uh, lentils, uh, lentil recipes, and uh, mustard sauces that are great. So she's got lots of cool things coming. Excellent. Okay, so you can get a hold of her on Instagram at, at Belladonna Foods. Belladonna Foods. That's Very good. It. And it uh, at some point in the future, we'll expect a. Uh, store a website or that you can actually order is, and have it shipped to you. It is on the way. Okay. With a minimum order of one truckload, I believe. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Belladonna Foods. And yes. also Phoenix Training Group. Oh, yes. We are sponsored, sponsored. Uh, primarily by Phoenix Training Group, uh, phoenixtraininggroup.com. Um, that's uh, where you can locate um, – Lots of education and training about uh, de-escalation techniques, uh, especially in healthcare, law enforcement, uh, security, target stores, anywhere that people get cranky, which is pretty much uh, everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere these days. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, thank and, you so and, much for, for tuning you, in. Uh, yes. I was hoping that there was a special class uh, just called Dealing with the Cranky Person Around You. <laughs> I we could, could get yeah. everybody think, going to that. Yeah, actually, we're developing one right now that's uh, that's kind of a general uh, training for places like Target stores and, and retail, things like that. Very good. To put their, all their folks for so they have some foundation in de-escalating and dealing with people. So it's right. not just left up to raw emotions or the heat of the moment type situations, right? Or, or security that, that can't do anything these days because... All retail have told security, don't ever do anything, say anything, touch people. You can't run after people. You can't. We don't even people. know why we hired you. <laughs> you can't do anything you except stand there and look in pretty. There with theft protection on your chest. Right? <laughs> Just be our handsome bodyguard. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the retail have become the security. So. so, yeah, you can access all the training uh, through uh, phoenixtraininggroup.com. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us this week. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, and um, we hope to have more of you back next week. We'll be taking more comments and answering those, and we'll have uh, more talks on different pop psychology myths and topics that affect our world today and our mental health. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait till next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Be good to each other. Yes. Oh, yeah. Be That's kind. very important. Be, Be nice to each other. Empathy. Think tolerance. about what it's like from someone else's viewpoint. Correct. Empathy and tolerance. Last words. Yes. All right. Bye, everyone. So long. Hello.